Okay. It should have said you were, we're going live. Did it tell you? It does. It yes. does. Says, yep. Live on Facebook. All right, everyone. I am here with Holly Cole. She is a good friend of mine and she's a certified career joy coach, just like I am. We met through the program and we are now working together on some coaching things. So we wanted to come in here and talk about our upcoming workshop for Mother's Day, which we've been so excited about. We we're talking about how um, it was like maybe a year ago when the like the idea first sparked or the the connection was first made between the two of us on both losing our mom at such a young age. Um, so I wanted to introduce Holly and first just ask you, you know, what kind of brought you to the pure joy world, which you know, a lot of people in my group know a, a little bit about Pure Joy, but not a lot. And then we can get into um, like the motherhood stuff that we're going to talk about um, for our Friday workshop. So, because I think this is a really important thing that we're going to get into this like heart pull in motherhood. So can you tell us a little bit about like what Pure Joy <laughs> Yeah, I didn't say the heart pull. That's totally it for me. Um, so I knew nothing about Pure Joy before signing up for the coaching. Um, I had seen Leslie on one parenting conference through Happily Family. Um, really loved her message, spoke to me. So jumped into one tea time after that and was like, I'm all in. Here I am. I have to do this thing. Um, I needed it for me. And it was the first thing I'd found parenting wise. Um, I read so many books and other things. There were pieces, there were bits that, you know, they resonated I could take from and, and adapt. But it was the first other person that I really found where it's like, I could, felt like I could feel her heart and like she was speaking directly to mm -hmm. mine. And that was like, has always been the basis for all of my parenting is instinctual and what just feels intuitively right. Yeah, the, it and, was that like heart connection. Yeah, and what just like the things that brought us together, that heart energy, the intuition that you talk about and um, re like redefining motherhood or um, what we call finding our identity in motherhood. Uh, yeah. So you're, you're still in the early stages of motherhood, you would say. Like, tell us the age of your daughter and... Um, when you just said, you know, reading all the books and wanting to know what to do, you have a little bit of a story with losing your mom mm -hmm. at this time where you were just beginning to be a mother. So mm -hmm. I guess, can you tell us a little bit about like your daughter and then how you became a mother was kind of a big story in your life. So yeah, absolutely. to touch on it, even though we're going to go into it really into the into our workshop, but just touch on, you know, yeah. who you are as a mom and who you have as a, as a daughter. As a little one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I have an amazing daughter. Her name's Emma. She's four. Um, complete little um, firecracker. She's just, <laughs> she's herself. And she's always been exactly who she is, came in. That's how she is now. Um, yeah, so I always knew that I wanted to be a mom. I think it was the one thing in life that I was certain about. And every other path, it's like, mm, not sure. Um, but that was the one thing I knew. Yeah, I have to do this. I, I know I need to be a mom. And before falling pregnant with Emma, I'd had three miscarriages. So I didn't know if I could mm -hmm. fall pregnant. I didn't know if that if it was actually going to be something. So you can see in the background, my little dog, Rosie. She was my first mm -hmm. little baby, the fur baby. Um, and yeah, so when I found out with, that I was pregnant with Emma, I was just ecstatic. And that same week, unfortunately, I found out that my mom had cancer. Um, so straight away, I was kind of thrust into this place of holding you know, all the potentiality of, of new life and, and death at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. Which weirdly, like, 
make sense in some ways, just like the cycle of death and rebirth. Um, yeah, but it was definitely sort of like a initiation through fire kind yeah. of feeling. Um, and this, yeah, and um, the talk about life and death is also a huge theme in, um, in the work that you're doing, you've been studying and that you want to do in the world. So um, we're going to go into that in the workshop, a little bit about um, Jungian work, right, with life and death, with shadow um, and light. So what yeah, has that... Would, in the Jungian world, like they call it the tension of the opposites. And that when you can hold both, that something beautiful emerges. Yeah, I love when you speak of this stuff because I went through my grief journey as well with, you know, young motherhood, because you have the excitement of young children, you had the excitement of pregnancy and birth, but then this other story of your mom getting cancer and ultimately how did her cancer journey go along with your pregnancy? Can you tell us a little bit? Yeah, yeah. so when I found out she um, had cancer, I flew home right away. Um, and was there with her through all of her chemo. So about the first six months or so of pregnancy. Um, and she was declared in remission, which was amazing. Um, I flew, so I live in Australia, but I don't think we've said that yet. No, we um, haven't. <laughs> so, and it's like, don't sound Australian, clearly. I'm from upstate New York originally. And um, so I flew back here to Australia and she was making plans. She was gonna, she and my dad had planned to come over for the birth of Emma. Um, she was feeling really great. Everything was was looking good. And I was about 30, well, I was 34 weeks pregnant. So it was leading up to um, Christmas time, beginning of December and got a phone call saying, you have to get home now, like mm. right now, get on a plane. <sighs> so yeah, so I had my baby shower literally the next day that my girlfriend had organized it. So we did that and then flew out immediately after. Um, I was 35 and a half weeks pregnant. So it's only like four more days to fly before being banned from any airline mm -hmm. carrying me. So thank God it happened when it did. Um, they could let me know early enough. But yeah, got home and was there and she passed away 10 days later. Um, yeah. It just had come back with a vengeance. And then three weeks after that, Emma was born. Yeah, so there's that. So I'm getting chills like from head to toe mm -hmm. because I, I haven't really gone through like the full details of your story with you, but mm -hmm. I just keep thinking of that life and death and that, yeah, it, it's so prominent in your story of, yeah, like holding. And, it, and the, so many other little pieces too. Like, so she was born on my birthday, same day. We have the same birthday. Mm -hmm. in the hospital I was born in so I live on the other side of the world as far away like mm -hmm. as possible and yet here's coming back to where I started is this brand new start of yeah. life um, oh so many chills mm -hmm. yeah um and the reason we're so excited about our workshop coming up on Friday I'm I put the description in the the Video, like the description of our workshop in the video. So anybody that wants to come in, um, they can join the workshop, but we're going to go into kind of what it has meant to both of us to be mothers in early motherhood, especially um, without having our moms there. And mm -hmm. this sort of initiation into motherhood. Um, I had my mom here for the first five years of my motherhood. So our stories are a bit different, mm -hmm. but we're, we're gonna be really sharing that connection in this workshop that um, we all have this feeling um, of kind of a new identity um, that formed once our moms were not here. And so our workshop's really gonna go into some of that. We're gonna have some guided meditation, uh, Holly's going to talk a lot more about um, just the role of motherhood, the ancestral mother, and what we carry with us um, 
like you said, that instinct, I just wanted to be a mom. And like, mm -hmm. what, what does that mean? Right? Yeah. Um, so we're learning really to trust yourself. That. Cause that's a big thing when you don't have your own mother here, mm -hmm. you don't have that resource. Cause I think the instant thing that people think, oh, you just call your mom and you ask, and what did she do? And when you don't have them to ask, what did you do? Who do you, who do you call on? Right. Um, a lot yeah. of times it just comes down to calling on yourself and your own, your own wisdom. Yeah. And so, yeah, in this workshop, we're going to touch on that. And then we will have a little surprise in the workshop on how to keep this resource going, this connection, right? Like not mm -hmm. feeling so alone in this motherless, um, this role of motherless daughter or a role in motherhood without being able to call a mom like mm -hmm. our mom but how yeah. can we build this community of moms who you know can be there for us um so we're excited to take the work or the group forward after the workshop too for anyone that's wanting to to be connected absolutely um, and that's such an important point as well is that is the connection and is is knowing that you're not alone in doing it like it made such a world of difference when we connected in our training yeah. over this. And I just know that I felt, um, it just felt amazing to feel not alone anymore in that journey. Yes. yes, and I know several of my clients who are also, have also lost their mom um, and just feeling that connection with them as well in this shared experience. That's all it is, is we're sharing this similar experience mm -hmm. in life. So. If you are watching the video and you aren't registered for the workshop, we would love to have you. Um, and it's on Friday night, but if you cannot make it, so <laughs> Holly's in Australia. She's got a Saturday morning time. I've got a Friday evening time. Wherever you are in the world, you're welcome to join. I will send you the recording if you can't be there live on the workshop. Um, and it is, like I said, it's just a way to get to know us and then other motherless daughters and decide if you'd like to, you know, just come into this little community that we're, we're starting and, um, and this, cause this won't be the last, this will be the first time, but not the last time we all come together. So, um, is there anything else you wanted to say before we head out? I wanted to keep this pretty short, but. Yeah. Um, just look forward to seeing whoever can join us at the workshop. Um, and also to that, as much as it's about grief, and there's obviously a lot of, of grief, um, there's a lot of joy and there's so much strength and so much beauty to be found um, when you kind of walk this, this path of being a motherless daughter um, and redefining who you are. Yeah, that's beautiful. So, when you said to me, grief is the gateway to joy, I wrote that down in our mm -hmm our planning and um I just love that mm. yeah that we can that both and we're holding um yeah. and that's what our workshop will be um really how do we hold both and and shared ex we'll be sh sharing lots of activities that will will um bring that joy and gratitude piece into Mother's Day where we we don't always feel can feel those things um as a mother and it can daughter. be empowering too that's one of the other things is that there is a distinct power in it when you come into to motherhood as the initiation and make it your own. And it's, yeah, feels like fire. Like it's just, yeah. it's a really big energy source. Yes. So if you're looking for some empowerment, we, mm -hmm. that's, that's our goal. So it's feel, coming away from this workshop with feeling empowered in this. So thank you so much, Holly. Yeah, um, thank you. I'm going to say goodbye to Facebook. Stop this. And um, we'll see you on Friday. That's good. Or Bye. whatever time it is. <laughs> <Where you are. laughs>